everyone. Um, thank you for, for coming after the long day yesterday and the long night, maybe for some. So it's great to see you guys here. Um, my name is Lucia. Oh, yeah. My name is Lucia and I come from Aura Madrid, um, the candidacy that ran in Madrid and won the City Hall. And I'm going to be presenting and trying to help this workshop to be as most useful for all of us. So we can um, learn from uh, the, 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 the uh, guests that we have here, but also from all of you guys how to organize a democratic participative uh, a municipalist candidacy. So this is the main objective of this uh, workshop and I'm going to present you to the guests that we have and also we explain you a little bit uh, the methodology that we thought that could be useful for this, for this workshop and to see if you guys agree that we do this way. So um, today we have uh, with us uh, Claire Waldern, she's from ba Take Back the City from London. Um, they run, uh, I don't know when, when was it? Last year. Last year. Um, we also have uh, Clau uh, Claudia Deso and Bryce Garcia, they come from Marea Atlantica from Galicia. They run, they won, and uh, it's interesting they're going to be talking together because she is now um, um, deputy in the, city, in the government of the, of the region and, um, and he is from the movement. So she is uh, institutionally responsible, he is a part of the movement, so it's going to be interesting to see the difference between the institutional side and the movement side. And we also have uh, Laura Vergés from uh, Lleida, Comun de Lleida. Uh, they also run and they have uh, two representatives in the, in the city hall. So these are the, the three, uh, the four guests that we have. So they are going to explain us a little bit how they did it, okay? Um, how they decided to run uh, for elections, how they read the context of their local uh, communities and their local cities how through that uh, context analysis they decided to do one thing or another, how they decided to take different paths, and also how they, they, exper they, they, they experiment, how to, to go uh, farther than just a classical uh, traditional party on this uh, creation of these candidacies. Okay? So these are the main elements of the presentation. Um, and after, so they are going to talk about this. We will have a round of questions. Uh, about this part, and after they will also explain us a little bit situations now, okay? What happens after these campaigns? These campaigns can be very powerful, very energetic, okay? Like uh, all people get together and uh, they are very powerful, but after when you either win and you have an institutional responsibility or you lose, but you still have uh, a huge responsibility doing the opposition on these institutions. What happened to these movements? What happened to the people that got involved during the campaign? How do we continue uh, making all these people participate? How is the, the connection between the institutional times and the institutional responsibilities and these movements, okay? So this is going to be the second part. And we propose, you guys, that we change the situation of the room. We, we get a circle and we have the discussion together so we can share experiences, questions, and just talk. Okay, we have to finish at 12.30 because we have the plenary, but I think we'll have time enough. Is that cool? Yes? Great. So thank you so much. Uh, Claire, do you want to start? You have to use the mic. It's not for, uh, is this for the video? Okay. There you go. <laughs> Hi everybody, um, yes, my name's Claire, I'm from London, um, and last year I was involved in uh, a project um, called Take Back the City. We ran a candidate in the London um, GLA elections, and basically in London we have, um, so we have lots of boroughs within the city, because there's 8 million people there, 10 million on a working day. Um, and then we have a, a Greater London Assembly, which is kind of like the citywide council. And there's 25 people who sit in there. And there's also um, the mayor, I'm sure. Um, yeah, everyone knows about city mayors. Um, and in 2016, we stood a candidate for the GLA. So she, if she had been elected, she would have been one of the 25 people who along with the mayor have this kind of overall responsibility for London. Um, so to give you a bit of info about the context, um, 
I guess uh, the project was founded in January 2015 at a time when politics in the UK felt like <laughs> it was in a very bad place. Um, we didn't really feel like there was any kind of uh, opposition to kind of a, a right centrist politics. Um, at that time there wasn't much to tell between the Labour and the Tories. Um, and in London, really, it's a time when big crises, it feels to me like we're starting up. The housing crisis was really hitting the headlines. The numbers of evictions of um, private renters was uh, massively increasing. The numbers of homeless people was massively increasing. Um, the kind of low wage um, issue that we have in the UK really felt like it was beginning to explode. And against this context, there was a group of teachers who um, were thinking about the fact that most of the students they work with in London are young people of colour. So in, in London, most young people are not white, they're people of colour. And yet, our politicians do not reflect the diversity of our city. And having talked to their students, they felt that politics was so far from the lived realities of these young people who were facing police violence, who were facing eviction. Um, and they kind of made a decision that students and teachers would form this thing called Take Back the City, and that was kind of where it was born. Um, yeah, so as I said, um, big social issues are really coming to a head. Um, there was a really quite famous campaign in London where young mothers were going to be evicted from their hostel with their, with their babies or heavily pregnant and they were going to be sent spread out across the UK where they didn't know anyone um, because the London Council simply say now we cannot house a lot of people that historically they have always done. Um, yeah, it was a, a really bad time for faith in traditional kind of working class politics. So unlike today where Labour has Jeremy Corbyn and there's like a real surge back to the left, two and a half years ago, it's, it was a long way away from, from what we have now. Um, so the decision was made to initially put forward a people's mayor candidate for the London elections last year. Um, and so as I said, so there was going to be 25 GLA councillors elected and one mayor elected. And at, at first we thought, well, we're going to get a mayor elected, like, let's do it, why not? Um, yeah, and we called it Take, I mean, I didn't call it Take Back the City. Some people called it Take Back the City because of, you know, the symbolism of how the city has been lost to the mega rich and uh, unaccountable politicians. Um, so the, the organisation got going and the first people who were recruited were uh, students and ex-students and teachers, which you can imagine is an interesting mix um, of, of power dynamics going on straight away. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to talk to you a bit about, I'll try and be quick, about um, how we centred participation in the project from, from the off. So the first thing is that young working class people of colour were invited into the organisation from day one. It wasn't that the project got set up and then afterwards sort of lots of white people said, oh no, there's no black people here, shit, get them in quickly. It was about centering those people and their experience from day one. And I think a, a, a massive success of Take Back the City has been that it massively has raised up young black and brown voices in London, which desperately needs to happen. Um, I'm not going to pretend that wasn't without um, challenge. You can imagine when you have um, like university educated teachers and you have young working class black 16 year old girls, you've got power imbalances there. And I'm not going to pretend they weren't there. But um, at the, from day one, we centred the idea of um, genuine participation. Um, we, we came about our manifesto um, through... Where is it? Yeah, we came about our um, manifesto through um, a massive outreach process. So we went and met with 75 different groups of Londoners across the city in a year. Um, and we wanted to centre those who were marginalised, who are normally not heard. So, for example, this woman up here actually is a young homeless woman who lives in a homeless hostel. So some of the workshops that we did were going to homeless groups of people and saying to them, what do you want from London? What issues matter to you? Um, what would a fair, just London look like? Um, this group here... Um, 
is a young group of um, singers who uh, use a community centre in a really deprived part of East London. Um, these girls over here are college students. We went and did a lot of um, people's manifesto workshops in schools and colleges to really get the voices of young people heard. Um, we went and met with uh, migrant cleaners in their lunchtime in their lunch break to ask them what would you want out of a people's manifesto um, and we also had an online system open so we met with uh, not sure but we met with 75 groups of people um, and we did this online thing and so we got about 2,000 um, policy submission ideas in the end through that process but the main thing for us was to prioritize the physical outreach and not the online outreach um, yeah, so once we started having the, the bones of the manifesto coming together, we, um, we did actually then decide that we were not going to stand a mayoral candidate and we made that decision because we didn't have the money and we didn't have the time. Um, and we also just didn't have the political experience needed to run a mayoral campaign. They are a mass massively fundraised. You have like you know, people with like 30 years political experience getting hired from the US and whatever to come and run these campaigns and like we just couldn't, we just couldn't compete against that in a city of 8 million people, it just wouldn't have been possible. So we made a decision instead to stand a candidate for the Greater London As Assembly and we picked the area of City and East, which is in East London, which um, covers the city, which is a relatively, well, it's a very wealthy area, and East London, which is the most deprived area, uh, economically deprived area, and one of the most diverse areas of London. And we also picked that because the person who became our candidate, um, someone called Amina Gatinga, I don't know if she's here or not, here she is, um, she has worked with communities in East London as a singing teacher for many years and um, yeah, just kind of knows that area, has experienced so many of the issues herself that people were talking about um, and we felt that that made sense um, as an area and also because Newham Council, which is one of the local councils in East London, uh, is a Labour council, so it should be left wing, it should be looking out for working class people, but has been really berated for kind of the social and ethnic cleansing that's going on there, which is that just poor people and poor, especially black and brown people, are being pushed out of that area and the mega rich are being shipped in, which I'm sure is an issue in so many people's cities at the moment. Um, so an, a big way that we tried to centre participation was to really make our events like as participatory as possible. So to be honest, we would never have a room set out like this, it would never happen. Um, we would, <laughs> we have, we would kind of, everything is always about getting people talking. So we'd be in a circle or there'd be rows and there'd be lots of children here and there'd be a big tray of free food at the back and we'd have singing and dancing and children's activities and it really we wanted to like transform the way that people feel about politics so rather than it being someone like me standing and talking at you from the front we wanted to give people confidence in their own politics and own ideas and we felt the need that we had to therefore transform space um, and one of the, the most popular events that we did was actually just like an evening of like music rap spoken word and like 800 young people came to it who just would never come to a kind of political event, but it was, the music was political, the essence of it was political. Um, we also tried to do campaigning in a different way, and hopefully I'm gonna tell you about why it is that we failed through that. But our thought was that um, we wanted to use space differently. And in the UK, we don't have really a history of like there being outdoor assemblies or like the kind of Podemos circles or whatever that's happened here, like just hasn't happened in the UK, partly because the weather's shit, yeah? Like you can't do it. Um, and, but what we were like wanted to do is, yeah, we do want to do outdoor stuff. So we did have outdoor discussions. We had, um, we had street stalls where we would canvas people, but also um, we would have a singing workshop on the side so kids could come and sing whilst we chatted to their parents about politics or whatever. Um, so we wanted to really like do politics differently 
partly in response to the fact that we all had had so many conversations with people that we know that just d don't vote and feel like it's an absolute waste of time because no one represents you anyway. Um, yeah, so we really wanted to kind of do things differently. Um, during the run up to the election, we got Amina, our candidate, to get on like the London buses and stand at the front and recite political poetry um, and just chat to people and yeah, really do campaigning in a kind of different, exciting way. Um, what have we got? Um, yeah, we crowdfunded our entire campaign and the average donation was like £10. Um, and we did that partly because we didn't have any money actually, but also because this was a way to bring in people to the, um, to the political process um, early on. Um, and I guess, uh, hopefully, go on to say some more about the challenges, but I think, um, in some ways, I would say that rather than producing, we, we, we didn't actually produce a very successful candidacy because our method of campaigning just does not work in the UK, essentially. Like, actually, you do have to do it traditionally. You do actually just have to knock on doors and whatever. Like, there's, there's no evidence that you can succeed otherwise as yet. Um, and I think in many ways, like, the manifesto that we produced is much more a testimony to what we did. And I, like for me, this doesn't look like a traditional manifesto at all. And that was the point. We didn't want it to be dense text. We wanted, wanted it to be something that people would look at and think like, yeah, this speaks to me. This is about my experience of the city. And um, yeah, and, and like it's quite like, um, the language is quite like conversational rather than like academic or political. Um, and we really wanted to explain the fact that, you know, ord ordinary Londoners had kind of created these um, policies. Um, we did get quite a lot of media coverage and that was good and that's, that goes some way, but ultimately like that doesn't, media coverage doesn't get the vote out. And um, yeah, I think I'll talk a bit more later about what didn't work. Yeah, so for now, shall I, is that right? Yeah. Well, hello. I'm Laura Vergés from Lleida, which is a, a small city, 150 kilometers from here uh, to the west. And I'm participating in a candidacy, a local candidacy, which is called Comú de Lleida. It's uh, Lleida Commons or something like that in English. And well, our, we we try to to present a, an alternative. Uh, Candidacy that um, there you have the the symbol of uh, Lleida and the symbol of the city town, and we try to renew it as we want to renew the city. So uh, the just for the, if you don't know Lleida, it's not a very big city. Uh, it's uh, like a rural city. It, most of the activity is services, but we are surrounded by a. a by fields, so the, the agriculture is important. And this is, uh, we have some fields inside the city or surrounding the city. And also it's important to know that uh, Lleida is the biggest city in a very big area. So we have uh, just towns around us of uh, maybe 10,000 10, uh, inhabitants or something like that. So it's the capital of the west part of, of Catalonia. And uh, the political context when we decided to, to launch our candidacy was um, Lleida is a very traditional city. We have, uh, we have had the same party since the beginning of uh, democracy in the city, in the town hall. So it's like uh, things are always the same. And we have the socialist, so-called socialist, but it's a very conservative uh, party, especially the ones in Lleida. And 
they have been there for nearly 40 years, just two years with another uh, party. And in the last time, in the previous elections, there has been also uh, just a participation of 50% of uh, people going to vote. And the, they elected just three parties, uh, which are right parties, uh, conservative parties. So all the parties on the left were out of the city town, uh, of the city hall. So we decided to, to promote a, a, candidate, a candidacy uh, calling to social movements and calling all the all the left parties, Esquerra Republicana, Iniciativa, all the old left parties. We asked them to, if they were interested in creating a, an unitary candidacy with people from social movements, from people not coming from other parties, and we prepared like a manifest of minimum consensus, uh, the, the minimum uh, main points that uh, can unite us and which can be summarized in transparency, participation and co uh, commonwealth. And uh, the, I think one important thing is that the, the, the promoting group was a, a very united group. Uh, we were people, uh, we know each other from many years, from the anti-globalization campaigns, from the 15M campaigns, many different, we have a shared history, uh, some of the people promoting uh, the, the initiative. So we decided to prepare this uh, minimum consensus, then we went to the social movements, we went to the parties to propose uh, to create this, this kind of candidacy. And I have to say that uh, the social movements, <laughs> they responded like uh, some people were very interested, but at the same time they, they didn't want to, uh, to be identified with just one party. So they wanted to, to keep the independence from the political sphere. So they, some people collaborated with us, but that as, a, as personal, not in the name of the, of the associations of, the, of social movements. And regarding the left uh, parties, they were very interested at first. We, we managed to, to get them in, at the same table, talking about the program, talking about the problems of Lleida. We have uh, many problems of poverty, of uh, the crisis, uh, housing, all these kind of things. So we were mostly uh, coincident in, in the, the ideas we wanted for Lleida, but finally we didn't manage to, to put them all together. They wanted to keep, well, I will go, but if I am the first in the, in the electoral list, or I will come, but uh, it has to be that way or this way. So they, we were, we all agree in the main points of the programs, but when it comes to prepare the list, to prepare the campaign, they decided, no, 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 we have to do it like a more, in a more traditional way, and we didn't want it, the people, citizens uh, promoting that, we, we didn't agree. So finally we decided, well, you don't want, we will ask uh, citizens if they want a candidacy like that, uh, with transparency, participation, um, different from the traditional parties. So we went to the streets, we prepare a campaign, we get uh, 2,000 people singing to say, well, we like this idea, we, we support this idea, so we decided to, to prepare a candidacy, which was a, a little bit different from the traditional ones. Uh, we decided to make primaries to choose the list, and we were one week or two, a little bit more than one week on the streets asking people with the information about the, the candidates and asking people to vote. We <coughs> so it was open to all, all the city, not just our militants or so. We do it uh, on the streets and also by telematics with the, the help of uh, Pirate Party, which is the only party that uh, uh, accepted to participate in this kind of, of candidacy. So we are citizens and <laughs> citizens from the Pirate Party. And we decided to, instead of uh, doing uh, or, or presenting a candidacy in, in the Spanish legal system, you can do, uh, you can present two kind of list or candidacies. One is a traditional party or a coalition of parties, and the other one it's called a group of, of electors, a grupación de electores, which is uh, it's not a party; it's uh, a, a group of people that decides decide 
that they want to, to participate in politics, and you create this group, and you, you create this group especially for the elections in Lleida for these years. And then after four years, you have to repeat all the process. You have to, and you are asked to, to present at least in the, it depends on the population of the city, but in, in Lleida it was uh, 1,500 uh, signatures of people with all the details. They have to present a copy of the identity card. So it's a bit of, it's complicated and you have just 20 days before the electoral campaign to, to, get, a, to, to get all these uh, backings. So it was like a problem in, on one hand because it was difficult and you have to, it's a complicated process, but at the same time it uh, allows us to allow us to, to make a longer campaign. We have 20 more days than the others. So we began 20 days before and it was a very good, it, it, it was uh, really successful because uh, when we talk uh, to the people on the streets, we said, ah, uh, are you interested in a candidate? And they said, ah, I don't want to know anything about politics. Uh, I don't like parties. And we said, well, we are not a party. We are a group of electors. And then, oh, what's that, what's that? And so it was uh, interesting because it was different and people, uh, which is uh, like uh, fed up of traditional parties, it, it was a good uh, argument. So we, we, get more than 2,000 uh, signatures. All the, the secretary of the town hall said to us, uh, next time do like a traditional party because it's, it's, to work for, it's a lot of work for me, but uh, he was also happy because it was the first time that in a city, which is not very big, but it's not a town, so it was the first time that uh, this kind of uh, um, candidature, uh, a group of electors, achieves its goal to, to present all the, all the signatures. So in, in this uh, first stage, we basically were in, on the streets talking to people. We have these kind of tables we prepare. Uh, I think one important thing is also this uh, little things of uh, design, so you, you are there with uh, good presence. So we prepare this uh, kind of tables and we were in different neighborhoods and a lot of, the, of days on the street, a lot of people on the street talking to people, preparing uh, assemblies on the, on the squares and so on. Uh, our strategies at the beginning and also after we, we get in, into the city hall uh, are based in our political principles, so we try to, to be coherent and, and, and put into practice what we defend for, for the city. So uh, we work a lot on transparency issues. We prepare, we are working uh, too hard, the, the, the photo uh, on the back, it's one of our representatives reading and reading papers from the city hall. And we prepare informs, reports about that to, to, to give it to the people with a meaningful way so they can understand what's happening, everybody can understand what's happening on the city. Uh, we uh, also work with uh, participation and you can see these uh, photos on the street. And uh, basically we focus on issues about the commonwealth, uh, the basic goods, and with the collaborative, collaborative work and also with a discourse with this uh, far from this uh, more traditional words of anti-capitalist, anti, anti, anti. No, we, we use, we try to use the language of people not being anti, but being pro. So instead of being anti-capitalist, we are pro co co cooperative, so this kind of things. Uh, we make an intensive use of digital networks as uh, some of the media, local media, didn't uh, love us very much. So they, they don't give us too much space in the, in the traditional media, so we, we have to use our own media. And 
We have uh, the web, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, uh, electronic uh, newsletter, and this kind of things. And some of the problems, of course, are keeping this level of participation because uh, the times, institutional times, the the time of our own workers or representatives in the in the town hall, is very different from the people like me. We have our work and we have to participate. We don't have so much time. Uh, we are. We don't have too much money. So, for instance, we meet in a in a bar, which uh, let us uh, have the meetings there. And uh, I see here uh, strangers in the hall. I think all the parties think that we are something strange, which is uh, that we are discussing their position. So even the left parties, which are also in the now in the in the city hall. They look at us like a bit, mm, you came here, well, we are here already, so we don't need you. <laughs> we have a, it, you are uh, uh, taking our uh, space, so it's, it's difficult to, to work together with other parties, but sometimes we, we achieve it. And also we have a very aggressive uh, response from the, from the power, from the uh, el alcalde. And they are really aggressive because we are like the difference, and they don't understand. Even now, they, they I think they they don't understand what we are doing there. And also another problem, or sometimes a bit conflictive, is uh, how to participate in bigger projects. We are a local candidacy, so now, for instance, there's a process in Catalonia to create a new big space for all Catalonia. And it, sometimes it's a bit problematic to say, well, we are locals, we, we should stay just in the city, or should we participate in bigger programs? So that's all. Good morning. We, we don't we don't have presentation, <laughs> so uh, we will try to to share with you, uh, me and Bryce, uh, uh, our our experience in in a, in a small city in the north of Spain, uh, in a region called Galicia, in a small town uh, called Coruña, where uh, we make a, a civic uh, candidacy and, and participatory process uh, to run into the elections in 2015 and uh, believe it or not we, we won the elections and now we become the government of the city and, and me actually I'm, I'm the councillor of, of a new department called participation and democratic innovation and, and Bryce and, and some other colleagues that are here in the are, are, are part of the, the council or, or, or the movement and what we wanted to, to share with you, uh, I will try to make a short context about uh, how uh, we made all the process of building the, the candidacy and, and some things that we thought uh, work. But also we, we found interesting, as we have this kind of workspace, also to share with you some things that are not working and, and, and that mm, we don't have uh, for sure the, the solution, but, but w we have the reflections about what is not uh, going uh, on, especially in the, in the structure of the, of the movement. And that is a part that Bryce is going to explain much more than, than me. Um, our experience is, is really, really similar than, than Jada, and I think really similar to any other municipalism processes in Spain. And, and that's, that's really interesting because we, we work with this like uh, ethic, uh, hacker ethic of, of uh, um, sharing no? the, the code of this ethic code, these manifestos that we were writing, uh, etc. No? But, but, but what is in interesting, I think, is, is to, to recognize that uh, even if every single process seems really similar, every single process is different. And it's different because the contexts are different. And for example, in, in, in A Coruña, in, in, in our city, I mean, it's, it's a town that historically was, was um, 
the, the government was uh, one of these uh, big parties that, that work uh, in Spain. Here we had a, a strong tradition of bipartidism, uh, or the right or the left party. In, the, in, the, in A Coruña it was the, this socialist party that was uh, in the government for more than 20 years. So there was this, um, yeah, this, this um, monopoly and, and this routine on the, on the way of making politics and, and many, many inertias and, and rhythms that are in the, in the city but also in the inside, in the council that now we are really facing uh, from this not changing anything for 20 years. Um, and there was a short, short period of a uh, coalition, left coalition with the Socialist Party and also a Nationalist Party, but that's, that didn't even uh, go further. And then the last uh, four years was uh, the, the right party. Um, and then we, we appear. No? So uh, how, how Mare Atlantica started? Is it started as a, um, as a hypothesis of uh, that, that we feel that there was uh, a need to change in the to, to make things differently in the city and also to, to take a little bit of more responsibility and, and uh, with how things were, were being in the city no? and, and, and to really take um, um, uh, an active uh, attitude regarding the, the, the policies no? and, and regarding our own lives how we can take really the, the responsibility of how we wanted things to, 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 da, to, to be and not waiting others to, to make the, poli the policies that, that affect our lives. No? So, so it started like that with this uh, question that we share and we share it with the, with the city. We write this, this manifest uh, of, of taking back the, the city and the power for the 99%. Uh, and with this idea of the power is only in the one percent and the rest we are more and we have to really came together and, and take back this power we came into the streets with this question to share with the people but trying really to 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 feel if this question was if this feeling was was real or or, or not and and actually the the reaction because the the first uh, structures were really really simple we came into the squares with a small blue piece of fabric as a carpet circle and, and we put it in the street and with a microphone we share the question and the people just take the microphone and, and starting to say yeah I want to change this thing in my neighborhood this and this and I don't like this uh, so the participation in that uh, very 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 uh, beginning <laughs> in that very beginning uh, was really natural real really organic without any kind of a structure just the emotion of I want to change things, and I, I will, I will tell it, and I will share it with with the people around. And and uh, after that kind of meetings, then we start to uh, that became like um, groups in the neighborhoods that we call mareas, because the our process uh, it's called Marea Atlantica, which means a tide, Atlantic tide. We are a city in front of the Atlantic Ocean, so we really. Mm, we, we made, a, I think, uh, a, a really beautiful work on, on giving importance on, on how we, we, um, we call things, how we call ourselves. So we call ourselves with something that is really characteristic and really important from our own identity, which is, in this case, the, the ocean and, and the Atlantic and that energy that, that came. And, and it was also a, a, a poet and a writer, uh, Man Manuel Rivas, that on an informal meeting, very, very before that this started, uh, says no, in, in a public meeting, like, I can imagine that the change will come as, a, as an Atlantic tide, as a big tide, as this movement of change. And we took that and we developed many, I mean, this identity of, of Mare Atlantica, but also some uh, process that we had to, to to write together our, no, our own documents, our own laws, and we call that processes like marea viva, marea uh, alive, tide, marea alta, high tide, marea baixa, uh, low tide, and we keep on going with this vocabulary that it's our our own, no? and and we also write together our ethic code, 
and and in that moment really not not uh, knowing that we were end, ended up uh, running into the elections but trying to make this exercise of imagining um, the rules that we wanted that elected people in the case that we, do, we, we run into the elections should um, follow so there we put the salaries that, that those people should have and those people are us now but it's interesting that we made that exercise without thinking that it was for for us no and and and, and really building uh, yeah our own somehow our own house no and, and also reflecting on 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 the form of the government that we wanted to to make uh, with this um a strong, I mean, these words like uh, transparency, participation, as main uh, uh, words to explain how we wanted and how we would make things differently. Um, and of course, uh, and, and as in many other places, we make a, a process of confluency, which means we, we, we ask the people from the parties to join us but to join us on an individual part, uh, attitude, part, part, participating, uh, taking away the card of the party. Okay, we know you are from a party, but we ask you to, to come here to work together and not to put the, the, the party interest uh, in the front, but to have it apart and to really try to work together on, on this political project, no? And, and there were six parties that, that came into this, this idea, and honestly, not without uh, tensions, of course, because also the dynamics and the, and the rhythms and the inertias of the parties are really old, and it's really, really difficult to change that. And, and, and the way to change that is it's also, as anything, uh, it, it really depends on the on the characters and on the personal, on the people that re really, how they, 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 they deal with maybe this identity of being from a party, but also this wish to make this politics differently. So we make this confluence with six parties, but uh, the, um, I think one of the, yeah, the, 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 the important thing of, of Maria Atlantica was that, that this um, civic uh, glue this this part this this civic people that we really with different uh, different really different 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 dif different backgrounds uh, that we started this this uh, space uh, that keep keep was was a strong and is still the strongest part of of our process even if it's a process where there is there are parties inside and that's important because once one party or or the dynamics of the of the party it's that space, then we, we lose the, the different way we, we, we really wanted to, to do things. And there, was, there, the, there were two um, important, let's say, uh, I, don't feel, I don't think there is a, a receipt of how to win elections or how to make municipalism, but I, 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 but I think there are two things that can really work for any place, which is uh, work with methodology, putting really the, um, the focus on the how we make things, on, on the, really on the, as, as, as you said, about the space, how we build this space. It's really different the, the relation that we built here. We stand up speaking to you that on, or if we built another kind of, of situation, no? for example. And, and another part that was absolutely uh, Im important for us, that was the, the, the group that was facilitating and ma making all the mediation during the whole process. And that was uh, an important group that was holding all the assemblies, also the relation with the, with the parties, with other group that was really holding the welcome and, and, the, and, the, and the negotiation with the, with the parties. But this group and, this, and that methodology that we were using and, and designing for our own or process is still very, very important, but especially in all that process that we, that we start was absolutely uh, fundamental. To, to to I think to arrive to the to the um, all the uh, campaign 
uh, really making a campaign that, that uh, put a lot of emotion in the, in the city. A lot of, it was a really, really like a campaign made with our own hands. And for example, as an example, and just to, to end, the last uh, day of the campaign, we were walking the city from nine in the morning to nine in the evening. The, the, the person that now is the, is the mayor and on all the rest of the group, we were uh, walking the, the neighborhoods, just uh, speaking with the, with the people. And the media were not uh, speaking about us, but the people were speaking about us. And that was the, uh, that, uh, that was the way we really won the elections uh, in, that, in that really simple but emotionally uh, way. And I think for now it's okay. <laughs> So we can already start having the conversation. Uh, and you will talk after? Do, is that okay? Okay, great. So let's do it. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for, for coming after the long day yesterday and the long night, maybe for some. So it's great to see you guys here. Um, my name is Lucia. Oh, yeah. My name is Lucia and I come from Aura Madrid, um, the candidacy that ran in Madrid and won the City Hall. And I'm going to be presenting and trying to help this workshop to be as more as useful for all of us. So we can um, learn from uh, the, 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 the uh, guests that we have here, but also from all of you guys how to organize a democratic participative uh, a municipalist candidacy. So this is the main objective of this uh, workshop and I'm going to present you to the guests that we have and also we explain you a little bit uh, the methodology that we thought that could be useful for this for this workshop and to see if you guys agree that we do this way. So um, today we have uh, with us uh, Claire Waldern, she's from ba Take Back the City from London. Um, they run, uh, I don't know when, when was it? Last year. Last year. Um, we also have uh, Clau uh, Claudia Deso and Bryce Garcia. They come from Marea Atlantica from Galicia. They run, they won, and uh, it's interesting. They are going to be talking together because she is now um, um, deputy in the city, in the government of the of the region, and um, and he is from the movement. So she is uh, institutional responsible. He is a part of the movement. So it's going to be interesting to see the difference between the institutional side and the movement side. And we also have uh, Laura Vergés from uh, Lleida, Comune de Lleida. Uh, they also run and they have uh, two representatives in the, in the city hall. So these are the, the three, uh, the four guests that we have. So they are going to explain us a little bit how they did it, okay? Um, how they decided to run uh, for elections, how they read the context of their local uh, communities and their local cities how through that uh, context analysis they decided to do one thing or another, how they decided to take different paths, and also how they, they, experi they, they, they experiment, how to, to go uh, farther than just a classical uh, traditional party on this uh, creation of these candidacies, okay? So these are the main elements of the presentation. Um, and after, so they are going to talk about this. We'll have a round of questions. Uh, about this part, and after they will also explain this a little bit situations now, okay? What happens after these campaigns? These campaigns can be very powerful, very energetic, okay? Like uh, all people get together and uh, they are very powerful, but after when you either win and you have an institutional responsibility or you lose, but you still have uh, a huge responsibility to doing the opposition on these institutions. What happened to these movements? What happened to the people that got involved during the campaign? How do we continue uh, making all these people participate? How is the, the connection between the institutional times and the institutional responsibilities and these movements, okay? So this is going to be the second part. And we propose, you guys, that we change the situation of the room. We, we get a circle and we have the discussion together so we can share experiences, questions, and just talk. Okay, we have to finish at 12.30 because we have the plenary, but I think we'll have time enough. Is that cool? Yes? Great. 
So thank you so much. Uh, Claire, do you want to start? You have to use the mic. It's not for, uh, is this for the video? Hi everybody, um, yes, my name's Claire, I'm from London, um, and last year I was involved in uh, a project um, called Take Back the City. We ran a candidate in the London um, GLA elections, and basically in London we have, um, so we have lots of boroughs within the city, because there's 8 million people there, 10 million on a working day um, and then we have a, a Greater London Assembly which is kind of like the citywide council and there's 25 people who sit in there and there's also um, the mayor I'm sure um, yeah everyone knows about city mayors um, and in 2016 we stood a candidate for the GLA so she if she had been elected she would have been one of the 25 people who along with the mayor have this kind of overall responsibility for London um, so to give you a bit of info about the context Text. Um, I guess uh, the project was founded in January 2015 at a time when politics in the UK felt like <laughs> it was in a very bad place. Um, we didn't really feel like there was any kind of uh, opposition to kind of a, a right centrist politics. Um, at that time there wasn't much to tell between the Labour and the Tories. Um, and in London really it's a time when big crises it feels to me like we're starting up. The housing crisis was really hitting the headlines. The numbers of evictions of um, private renters was uh, massively increasing. The numbers of homeless people was massively increasing. Um, the kind of low wage um, issue that we have in the UK really felt like it was beginning to explode. And against this context, there was a group of teachers who um, were thinking about the fact that most of the students they work with in London are young people of colour. So in, in London, most young people are not white, they're people of colour. And yet, our politicians do not reflect the diversity of our city. And having talked to their students, they felt that politics was so far from the lived realities of these young people who were facing police violence, who were facing eviction. Um, and they kind of made a decision that students and teachers would form this thing called Take Back the City, and that was kind of where it was born. Um, yeah, so as I said, um, big social issues are really coming to a head. Um, there was a really quite famous campaign in London where young mothers were going to be evicted from their hostel with their, with their babies or heavily pregnant and they were going to be sent spread out across the UK where they didn't know anyone um, because the London Council simply say now we cannot house a lot of people that historically they have always done. Um, yeah, it was a, a really bad time for faith in traditional kind of working class politics. So unlike today where Labour has Jeremy Corbyn and there's like a real surge back to the left, two and a half years ago, it's, it was a long way away from, from what we have now. Um, so the decision was made to initially put forward a people's mayor candidate for the London elections last year. Um, and so as I said, so there was going to be 25 GLA councillors elected and one mayor elected. And at, at first we thought, well, we're going to get a mayor elected, like, let's do it, why not? Um, yeah, and we called it Take, I mean, I didn't call it Take Back the City. Some people called it Take Back the City because of, you know, the symbolism of how the city has been lost to the mega rich and uh, unaccountable politicians. Um, so the, the organisation got going and the first people who were recruited were uh, students and ex-students and teachers, which you can imagine is an interesting mix um, of, of power dynamics going on straight away. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to talk to you a bit about, I'll try and be quick, about um, how we centred participation in the project from, from the off. So the first thing is that young working class people of colour were invited into the organisation from day one. It wasn't that the project got set up and then afterwards sort of lots of white people said, oh no, there's no black people here, shit, get them in quickly. It was about centering those people and their experience from day one. And I think a, a, a massive success of Take Back the City has been that 
it massively has raised up young black and brown voices in London, which desperately needs to happen. Um, I'm not going to pretend that wasn't without um, challenge. You can imagine when you have um, like university educated teachers and you have young working class black 16 year old girls, you've got power imbalances there and I'm not going to pretend they weren't there. But um, at the, from day one, we centred the idea of um, genuine participation. Um, we, we came about our manifesto um, through, where is it? Yeah, we came about our um, manifesto through um, a massive outreach process. So we went and met with 75 different groups of Londoners across the city in a year. Um, and we wanted to centre those who were marginalised, who are normally not heard. So, for example, this woman up here actually is a young homeless woman who lives in a homeless hostel. So some of the workshops that we did were going to homeless groups of people and saying to them, what do you want from London? What issues matter to you? Um, what would a fair, just London look like? Um, this group here... Um, is a young group of um, singers who uh, use a community centre in a really deprived part of East London. Um, these girls over here are college students. We went and did a lot of um, people's manifesto workshops in schools and colleges to really get the voices of young people heard. Um, we went and met with c uh, migrant cleaners in their lunchtime in their lunch break to ask them, what would you want out of a people's manifesto? Um, and we also had an online system open. So we met with, uh, not sure, but we met with 75 groups of people um, and we did this online thing. And so we got about 2000 um, policy submission ideas in the end through that process. But the main thing for us was to prioritize the physical outreach and not the online outreach. Um, yeah, so once we started having the, the bones of the manifesto coming together, we, um, we did actually then decide that we were not going to stand a mayoral candidate and we made that decision because we didn't have the money and we didn't have the time. Um, and we also just didn't have the political experience needed to run a mayoral campaign. They are a mass massively fundraised. You have like you know, people with like 30 years political experience getting hired from the US and whatever to come and run these campaigns and like we just couldn't, we just couldn't compete against that in a city of 8 million people, it just wouldn't have been possible. So we made a decision instead to stand a candidate for the Greater London As Assembly and we picked the area of City and East, which is in East London, which um, covers the city, which is a relatively, well, it's a very wealthy area, and East London, which is the most deprived area, uh, economically deprived area, and one of the most diverse areas of London. And we also picked that because the person who became our candidate, um, someone called Amina Gatinga, I don't know if she's here or not, here she is. Um, she has worked with communities in East London as a singing teacher for many years. And um, yeah, just kind of knows that area, has experienced so many of the issues herself that people were talking about. Um, and we felt that that made sense um, as an area and also because Newham Council, which is one of the local councils in East London, uh, is a Labour council, so it should be left wing, it should be looking out for working class people, but has been really berated for kind of the social and ethnic cleansing that's going on there, which is that just poor people and poor, especially black and brown people, are being pushed out of that area and the mega rich are being shipped in, which I'm sure is an issue in so many people's cities at the moment. Um, so an, a big way that we tried to centre participation was to really make our events like as participatory as possible. So to be honest, we would never have a room set out like this, it would never happen. Um, we would, <laughs> we have, we would kind of, everything is always about getting people talking. So we'd be in a circle or there'd be rows and there'd be lots of children here and there'd be a big tray of free food at the back and we'd have singing and dancing and 
at children's activities and it really we wanted to like transform the way that people feel about politics so rather than it being someone like me standing and talking at you from the front we wanted to give people confidence in their own politics and own ideas and we felt the need that we had to therefore transform space um, and one of the, the most popular events that we did was actually just like an evening of like music rap spoken word and like 800 young people came to it who just would never come to a kind of political event, but it was, the music was political, the essence of it was political. Um, we also tried to do campaigning in a different way, and hopefully I'm gonna tell you about why it is that we failed through that. But our thought was that um, we wanted to use space differently. And in the UK, we don't have really a history of like there being outdoor assemblies or like the kind of Podemos circles or whatever that's happened here, like just hasn't happened in the UK, partly because the weather's shit, yeah? Like you can't do it. Um, and, but what we were like wanted to do is, yeah, we do want to do outdoor stuff. So we did have outdoor discussions. We had, um, we had street stalls where we would canvas people, but also um, we would have a singing workshop on the side so kids could come and sing whilst we chatted to their parents about politics or whatever. Um, so we wanted to really like do politics differently partly in response to the fact that we all had had so many conversations with people that we know that just d don't vote and feel like it's an absolute waste of time because no one represents you anyway. Um, yeah, so we really wanted to kind of do things differently. Um, during the run up to the election, we got Amina, our candidate, to get on like the London buses and stand at the front and recite political poetry. Um, and just chat to people and yeah, really do campaigning in a kind of different, exciting way. Um, what have we got? Um, yeah, we crowdfunded our entire campaign and the average donation was like 10 pounds. Um, and we did that partly because we didn't have any money actually, but also because this was a way to bring in people to the, um, to the political process um, early on. Um, and I guess, uh, hopefully, go on to say some more about the challenges, but I think um, in some ways I would say that rather than producing, we, we, we didn't actually produce a very successful candidacy because our method of campaigning just does not work in the UK essentially, like actually you do have to do it traditionally, you do actually just have to knock on doors and whatever, like there's, there's no evidence that you can succeed otherwise as yet. Um, and. I think in many ways, like the manifesto that we produced is much more a testimony to what we did. And I, like for me, this doesn't look like a traditional manifesto at all. And that was the point. We didn't want it to be dense text. We want it, wanted it to be something that people would look at and think like, yeah, this speaks to me. This is about my experience of the city. And um, yeah, and, and like it's quite like, um, the language is quite like conversational rather than like academic or political. Um, and we really wanted to explain the fact that, you know, ord ordinary Londoners had kind of created these um, policies. Um, we did get quite a lot of media coverage and that was good and that's, that goes some way, but ultimately like that doesn't, media coverage doesn't get the vote out. And um, yeah, I think I'll talk a bit more later about what didn't work. So for now, shall I? Is that right? Yeah. Great, thank you. Well, hello. I'm Laura Vergés from Lleida, which is a, a small city, 150 kilometers from here uh, to the west. And I'm participating in a candidacy, a local candidacy, which is called Comú de Lleida. It's uh, Lleida Commons or something like that in English. And well, our, we we try to 
to present a, an alternative uh, candidacy that uh, there you have the the symbol of uh, Lleida and the symbol of the city town and we try to renew it as we want to renew the city so uh, the just for the if you don't know Lleida, it's not a very big city. Uh, it's uh, like a rural city. It, most of the activity is services, but we are surrounded by a, a field, by fields, so the, the agriculture is important. And this is, uh, we have some fields inside the city or surrounding the city. And also it's important to know that uh, Lleida is the biggest city in a very big area. So we have uh, just towns around us of uh, maybe 10,000 10, uh, inhabitants or something like that. So it's the capital of the west part of, of Catalonia. And the political context when we decided to, to launch our candidacy was um, Lleida is a very traditional city. We've had uh, we have had the same party since the beginning of uh, democracy in the city, in the town hall. So it's like uh, things are always the same. And we have the socialist, so-called socialist, but it's a very conservative uh, party, especially the ones in Lleida. And they have been there for nearly 40 years, just two years with another uh, party. And in the last term, in the previous elections, there has been also uh, just a participation of 50% of uh, people going to vote. And the, they elected just three parties, uh, which are right parties, uh, conservative parties. So all the parties on the left were out of the city town, uh, of the city hall. So we decided to, to promote a, a, candidate, a candidacy uh, calling to social movements and calling all the all the left parties, Esquerra Republicana, Iniciativa, all the old left parties. We asked them to, if they were interested in creating a, an unitary candidacy with people from social movements, from people not coming from other parties, and we prepared like a manifest of minimum consensus, uh, the, the minimum uh, main points that uh, can unite us and which can be summarized in transparency, participation and co uh, commonwealth. And uh, the, I think one important thing is that the, the promoting group was a, a very united group. Uh, we were people, uh, we know each other from many years, from the anti-globalization campaigns, from the 15M campaigns, many different, we have a shared history, uh, some of the people promoting uh, the, the initiative. So we decided to prepare this uh, minimum consensus, then we went to the social movements, we went to the parties to propose uh, to create this, this kind of candidacy. And I have to say that uh, the social movements, <laughs> they responded like uh, some people were very interested, but at the same time they, they didn't want to, uh, to be identified with just one party. So they wanted to, to keep the independence from the political sphere. So they, some people collaborated with us, but that as, a, as personal, not in the name of the, of the associations of, the, of social movements. And regarding the left uh, parties, they were very interested at first. We, we managed to, to get them in, at the same table, talking about the program, talking about the problems of Lleida. We have uh, many problems of poverty, of uh, the crisis, uh, housing, all these kind of things. So we were mostly uh, coincident in, in the, the ideas we wanted for Lleida, but finally we didn't manage to, to put them all together. They wanted to keep, well, I will go, but if I am the first in the, in the electoral list, or I will come, but uh, it has to be that way or this way. So they, we were, we all agree in the main points of the programs, but when it comes to prepare the list, to prepare the campaign, they decided, no, 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 we have to do it like a more, in a more traditional way, and we didn't want it, the people, citizens uh, promoting that, we, we didn't agree. 
So finally, we decided, well, you don't want, we will ask uh, citizens if they want a candidacy like that, uh, with transparency, participation, um, different from the traditional parties. So we went to the streets, we prepared a campaign, we get uh, 2,000 people singing to say, well, we like this idea, we, we support this idea, so we decided to, to prepare a candidacy which was a, a little bit different from the traditional ones. Uh, we decided to make pr primaries to choose the list, and we were one week or two, a little bit more than one week on the streets, asking people with the information about the, the candidates and asking people to vote. We <coughs> so it was open to all, all the city, not just our militants or so. We do it uh, on the streets and also by telematics with the, the help of uh, Pirate Party, which is the only party that uh, uh, accepted to participate in this kind of, of candidacy. So we are citizens and <laughs> citizens from the Pirate Party. And we decided to, instead of uh, doing uh, or, or presenting a candidacy in, in the Spanish legal system, you can do uh, you can present two kind of list or candidacies. One is a traditional party or a coalition of parties, and the other one it's called a group of electors, a agrupación de electores, which is uh, it's not a party. It's uh, a, a group of people that decide decide that they want to to participate in politics, and you create this group, and you, you create this group especially for the elections in Lleida for these years. And then after four years, you have to repeat all the process. You have to, and you are asked to, to present at least in the, it depends on the population of the city, but in, in Lleida it was uh, 1,500 1, uh, signatures of people with all the details. They have to present a copy of the identity card. So it's a bit of, it's complicated and you have just 20 days before the electoral campaign to, to, get, a, to, to get all these uh, backings. So it was like a problem in, on one hand because it was difficult and you have to, it's a complicated process, but at the same time it uh, allows us to allow us to, to make a longer campaign. We have 20 more days than the others. So we began 20 days before, and it was a very good, it, it, it was uh, really successful because uh, when we talked uh, to the people on the streets, we said, ah, uh, are you interested in a candidate? And they said, ah, I don't want to know anything about politics. Uh, I don't like parties. And we said, well, we are not a party. We are a group of electors. And then, oh, what's that, what's that? And so it was uh, interesting because it was different and people, uh, which is uh, like uh, fed up of traditional parties, it, it was a good uh, argument. So we, we get more than 2,000 uh, signatures. All the, the secretary of the town hall said <laughs> to us, uh, "Next time, do like a traditional party because it's it's too work. F it's a lot of work for me." But uh, he was also happy because it was the first time that in a city, which is not very big, but it's not a town, so it was the first time that uh, this kind of uh, um, candidature, a, a group of electors, achieves its goal to to present all the all the signatures. So in, in this uh, first stage, we basically were in, on the streets talking to people. We have these kind of tables we prepare. Uh, I think one important thing is also these uh, little things of uh, design. So you, you are there with uh, good presence. So we prepare these uh, kind of tables and we were in different neighborhoods and a lot of, the, of days on the street, a lot of people on the street talking to people, preparing uh, assemblies on the, on the squares and so on. Uh, our strategies at the beginning and also after we, we get in, into the city hall uh, are based in our political principles, so we try to, to be coherent and, and, and put into practice what we defend for, for the city. So 
Uh, we work a lot on transparency issues. We prepare, we are working <laughs> too hard. The, the, the photo uh, on the back, it's one of our representatives reading and reading papers from the city <laughs> hall. And we prepare informs, uh, reports about that to, to, to give it to the people with a meaningful way so they can understand what's happening, everybody can understand what's happening in the city. Uh, we uh, also work with uh, participation, and you can see these uh, f photos on the street. And uh, basically, we focus on issues about the Commonwealth, uh, the basic goods, and with the collaborative, collaborative work, and also with a discourse with this uh, far from these uh, more traditional words of anti-capitalist, anti, anti, anti. No, we we use we try to use the language of people not being anti but being pro. So instead of being anti-capitalist, we are pro co co cooperatives or these kind of things. Uh, we make an intensive use of digital networks as uh, some of the media, local media, didn't. <laughs> Uh, love us very much, so they di they don't give us too much space in the in the traditional media. So we we have to use our own media, and we have uh, the web, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, uh, electronic uh, newsletter, and these kind of things. And some of the problems, of course, are keeping this level of participation because uh, the. Times, institutional times, the the time of our own workers or representatives in the in the town hall, it's very different from the people like me. We have our work and we have to participate. We don't have so much time. Uh, we are we don't have too much money. So, for instance, we meet in a in a bar, which uh, let us uh, have the meetings there, and. Uh, I see here uh, strangers in the hall. I think all the parties think that we are something strange, which is uh, that we are discussing their position. So even the left parties, which are also in the now in the in the city hall, they look at us like a bit. Mm, you came here. We are here already. So we don't need you. We have a, it. You are uh, uh, taking our uh, space. So. It's, it's difficult to to work together with other parties, but sometimes we we achieve it. And also, we have a very aggressive uh, response from the from the power, from the uh, el alcalde, and they are really aggressive because we are like the difference, and they don't understand. Even now, they they I think they they don't understand what we are doing there. And also another problem, or sometimes it's a bit conflictive, is uh, how to participate in bigger projects. We are a local candidacy, so now, for instance, there's a process in Catalonia to create a new big space for all Catalonia. And it, sometimes it's a bit problematic to say, well, we are locals, we, we should stay just in the city, or should we participate in bigger programs? So that's all. Good morning. We we don't we don't have presentation, <laughs> so uh, we will try to to share with you, uh, me and Bryce, uh, uh, our our experience in in a, in a small city in the north of Spain, uh, in a region called Galicia, in a small town uh, called La Coruña, where uh, we make a, a civic uh, candidacy and, and participatory process uh, to run into the elections in 2015 and uh, believe it or not we, we won the elections and now we become the government of the city and, and me actually I'm, I'm the councillor of, of a new department called participation and democratic innovation and, and Bryce and, and some other colleagues that are here in the are, are, are part of the, the council or, or, or the movement. 
And what we wanted to, to share with you, uh, I will try to make a short context about uh, how uh, we made all the process of building the, the candidacy and, and some things that we thought uh, work. But also we, we found interesting, as we have this kind of workspace, also to share with you some things that are not working and, and, and that mm, we don't have uh, for sure the, the solution, but, but w we have the reflections about what is not uh, going uh, on, especially in the, in the structure of the, of the movement. And that is a part that Bryce is going to explain much more than, than me. Um, our experience is, is really, really similar than, than Jada, and I think really similar to any other municipalism processes in Spain. And, and that's, that's really interesting because we, we work with this like uh, ethic, uh, hacker ethic of, of uh, um, sharing no? the, the code of this ethic code, these manifestos that we were writing, uh, et cetera. No? But, but, but what is in interesting, I think, is, is to, to recognize that uh, even if every single process seems really similar, every single process is different. And it's different because the contexts are different. And for example, in, in, in A Coruña, in, in, in our city, I mean, it's, it's a town that historical was, was um, the, the government was uh, one of these uh, big parties that, that work uh, in Spain. Here we had a, a strong tradition of bipartidism, uh, or the right or the left party. In, the, in, the, in A Coruña it was the, this socialist party that was uh, in the government for more than 20 years. So there was this, um, yeah, this, this um, monopoly and, and this routine on the, on the way of making politics and, and many, many inertias and, and rhythms that are in the in the city, but also in the inside, in the council that now we are really facing uh, from this not changing anything for 20 years. Um, and there was a short, short period of a coalition, left coalition with the Socialist Party and also a Nationalist Party, but that's, that didn't even go further. And then the last uh, four years was uh, the, the right party. Um, and then we, we appear, no? So uh, how, how Mare Atlantica started? Is it started as a, um, as a hypothesis of, uh, that, that we feel that there was a, a need to change, in the, to, to make things differently in the city and also to, to take a little bit of more responsibility and, and uh, with how things were, were being in the city, no? And, and, and to really take um, um, a, an active uh, attitude regarding the, the, the policies, no? And, and regarding our own lives, how we can take really the, the responsibility of how we wanted things to, 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 da, to, to be and not waiting others to, to make the, poli the policies that, that affect our lives, no? So, so it started like that with this uh, question that we share and we share it with the, with the city. We write this, this manifest uh, of, of taking back the, the city and the power for the 99%. Uh, and with this idea of the power is only in the 1% and the rest we are more and we have to really came together and, and take back this power, we came into the streets with this question to share with the people. But trying really to, 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 to feel if this question was if this feeling was, was real or, or, or not. And, and actually the, the reaction, because the, the first uh, structures were really, really simple. We came into the squares with a small blue piece of fabric as a carpet circle, and, and we put it in the street, and with a microphone we shared the question, and the people just take the microphone and, and starting to say, yeah, I want to change this thing in my neighborhood, this and this, and I don't like this. Uh, so the participation in that uh, very, very, very uh, beginning, <laughs> in that very beginning, uh, was really natural, real, really organic, without any kind of a structure, just the emotion of I want to change things, and I, I, will, I will tell it, and I will share it with, with the people around. And, and uh, after that kind of meetings, then we start to, uh, that became like um, groups in the neighborhoods that we call mareas. 
because the, our process, uh, it's called Mare Atlantica, which means uh, tide, Atlantic tide. We are a city in front of the Atlantic Ocean. So we really, mm, we, we made, a, I think, uh, a, a really beautiful work on, on giving importance on, on how we, we, mm, we call things, how we call ourselves. So we call ourselves with something that is really characteristic and really <laughs> important from our own identity, which is, in this case, the, the ocean and, and the Atlantic and that energy that, that came. And, and it was also a, a, a poet and a writer, uh, Man Manuel Rivas, that on an informal meeting, very, very before that this started, uh, says no, in, in a public meeting, like, I can imagine that the change will come as a as an Atlantic tide, as a big tide, as this movement of change. And we took that and we developed many, I mean, this identity of, of Maria Atlantica, but also some uh, process that we had to, to, to write together our, no, our own documents, our own laws, and we call that processes like Maria Viva, Maria uh, Alive Tide, Maria Alta, High Tide, Maria Baixa. Uh, low tide, and we keep on going with this vocabulary that it's our our own, no? and and we also write together our ethic code, and and in that moment, really not not uh, knowing that we were end ended up uh, running into the elections, but trying to make this exercise of imagining um, the rules that we wanted that elected people in the case that we, do, we, we run into the elections, should um, follow. So there we put the salaries that, that those people should have, and those people are us now. But it's interesting that we made that exercise without thinking that it was for, for us. No? And, 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 and really building, uh, yeah, our own, somehow our own house. No? And, and also reflecting on, on, on the form of the government that we wanted to, to make uh, with this um, a strong, I mean, these words like uh, transparency, participation as main uh, uh, words to explain how we wanted and how we would make things differently. Um, and of course, uh, and, and as in many other places, we make a, a process of confluency, which means we, we we ask the people from the parties to join us, but to join us on an individual part, uh, attitude, part, part, participating, uh, taking away the card of the party. Okay, we know you are from a party, but we ask you to, to come here to work together and not to put the, the, the party interest uh, in the front, but to have it apart and to really try to work together on, on this political project. No? And, and there were six parties that, that came into this, this idea, and honestly, not without um, tensions, of course, because also the dynamics and the, and the rhythms and the inertias of the parties are really old, and it's really, really difficult to change that. And, and, and the way to change that is it's also, as anything, uh, it, it really depends on the on the characters and on the personal, on the people that re really, how they, 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 they deal with maybe this identity of being from a party, but also this wish to make this politics differently. So we make this confluence with six parties, but uh, the, um, I think one of the, yeah, the, 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 the important thing of, of Maria Atlantica was that, that this um, civic uh, glue this, this part, this, this civic people that we really, with different, uh, different, really different, 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 different backgrounds, uh, that we started this this space, uh, that keep keep was was a strong and is still the strongest part of, of our process, even if it's a process where there is there are parties inside, and that's important because once one party or or the dynamics of the of the party, it's that space, then we, we lose the, the different way we, we, we really wanted to, to do things. And there, was, there, there, there were two 
um, important, let's say, uh, I don't feel, I don't think there is a, a receipt of how to win elections or how to make municipalism. But I, 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 but I think there are two things that can really work for any place, which is uh, work with methodology, putting really the, the focus on the how we make things, on, on the, really on the, as, as, as you said, about the space, how we build this space. It's really different the, the relation that we built here, we stand up, speaking to you that on or if we built another kind of, of situation no? for example and and another part that was absolutely uh, important for us that was the, the the group that was facilitating and ma making all the mediation during the whole process and that was uh, an important group that was holding all the assemblies also the relation with the with the parties with other group that was really holding the welcome and and the and the and the negotiation with the with the parties but this group and this and that methodology that we were using and and designing for our own or process is still very very important but especially in all that process that we that we start was absolutely uh, fundamental to 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 I think to arrive to the to the um, all the uh, uh, campaign uh, really making a campaign that that uh, put a lot of emotion in the in the city a lot of it was a really really like a campaign made with our own hands and for example as an example and just to to end the last uh, day of the campaign we were walking the city from nine in the morning to nine in the evening. The, the the person that now is the is the mayor and on all the rest of the group we were uh, walking the the neighborhoods just uh, speaking with the with the people and the media were not uh, speaking about us but the people were speaking about us and that was the uh, that uh, that was the way we really won the elections uh, in that in that really simple but emotionally uh, way and I think for now it's okay. So, okay, everyone is saying it. What do you guys think if we already changed the, the place? Yes? <coughs> so we can already start having the conversation. Uh, and you will talk after? Do, is that okay? Okay, great. So let's do it. That was great. It was really good. Sorry. Three, three, yeah. Down four, you cover the pit area of the tips. So you talk about inclusivity, race, and, and youth. And no one else did. And then. Yeah, so thanks very much to all the speakers because it's very interesting to hear all the different processes that have taken place over the last years in all these different cities. And I want to I wanted to ask a question to Claire because uh, I I had I hadn't heard about this uh, process in London. I had only heard um, about last year's elections and how the well you managed well I I didn't know if you were involved in the in the last uh, May year's uh, elections and well how was a bit this process because for us at least for me it was very well very exciting to see that the, you managed to kick out the liberal right wing uh, government you had for the previous years and the question would be if the if you were also involved in the campaign of Sadiq Khan and whether the, the fact that you had been campaigning one year before helped to win the the city hall and if at the moment you're involved with the current government or how is that going yeah thank you Yes, yeah, so we ran at the same time as Sadiq Khan, um, and to be honest, the the Labour the Labour move to the left was quite problematic for us. <laughs> um, 
because, because basically when Corbyn got in, there was like this massive surge of like hundreds of thousands of people joining Labour, again, being like, now's our, ch like, I can't describe to you how depressing, utterly depressing UK politics has been for so long. And Jeremy Corbyn has like given people hope in a way that I can't, like, I feel it in my body physically, like, yeah. I can't, I can't, yeah, it's just like changed how I feel about the world. And I know it's pathetic. Some people must be like, oh my God, it's just basic social democracy. But the last 20 years, the last 20 years have just been every, every, just losing every good thing we've ever had. And yeah, so to answer you, Corbyn getting in was problematic for us um, because actually lots of people who were initially involved in Take Back the City went to Labour. Um, and Sadiq getting the the nomination for London Mayor was also problematic for us because he was the most left-wing Labour candidate standing and actually it made it, that was a reason why we didn't, another reason why we didn't want to stand against him in the uh, mayoralship that it would have been seen as like splitting the vote in an unnecessary way and I think we would have looked stupid actually had we even tried. Um, Lots of us, we didn't stand in the national elections last week, but lots of us did go. And I, I've been canvassing for Labour and I, I didn't really realise this is stupid, but yesterday I was talking to someone who said that in Spain, maybe I'm wrong, that people, Catalonia, people don't really have to like knock lots of doors to get the vote out. But in the UK, the theory is you have to talk to every voter six times if you want them to vote for your party. And that's what the Labour Party say, who are one of the biggest parties. Can you imagine how many doors we would have had to knock, like knock, twen knock on 20 doors? Like, um, but in the UK, that's what you have to do to get, there's an incredible, uh, you know, like I'd, I've gone and knocked like 600 doors maybe for Labour in the election just gone. And I was one of tens of thousands of people doing that because people do not engage in politics like they do here. The idea that if you had a, a microphone, people would dare to talk on it about their politics is it wouldn't happen. People are so shy and private and they don't do politics. They don't talk about politics. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm getting evicted. This is my private experience. And Hope, hopefully what we have what we have starting to do is bringing that out into the public space anyway that's a long answer to your question uh, yeah. um, good morning everyone my name is Ngose Kona from Cape Town South Africa um, and I missed some of the presentations because I came late to my apologies um, my question is just from in, in, in Cape Town's context, Cape Town is divided in so many ways, racially, um, and that is informed by our history in South Africa, if one is familiar with the South African history. Apartheid divided um, non-whites from the whites. Um, and you see that geographically where people are located. Um, and the question that I perhaps want to ask is not maybe directed to the panelists, but perhaps to everyone, is how do you then um, organize, effectively organize racially divided people um, or people divided in terms of classes because in Cape Town you find pre in the inner city predominantly um, the, work, uh, the, the, the upper class um, and you find um, a group of workers who are informally accommodated um, in the inner city and there's no plan to accommodate um, the working class in, in Cape Town. So the, perhaps the question is how do you then effectively organize racially divided um, groups or maybe groups that are divided in terms of classes um, to perhaps work towards having a candidate that will represent um, the, 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 I mean, everyone around the community. Thank you. More questions? Yeah, and, um, of, of course, our, our our situation in in Acoruña is really different. Like Cape Town, we don't have. Uh, I mean, the the neighborhoods, um, the different that we can find is a different of class, of, but but not really even strong as, for example, in Barcelona, that uh, they made actually a map 
of the the sea quality in the in the city and the different really classes that exist in the different neighborhoods in our in our town of course there are um, differences um, and and we have for example uh, like a situation really um, hard that we are facing uh, kind to uh, which is the, the I don't know how to say in, in English asentamiento precario like like favelas a kind of with the most of the people uh, are, are gypsy people cam coming from Portugal, and they are really uh, living in the out uh, suburb of the of the city, and uh, we involved them. For example, I mean, we came to their place to 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 speak with them, no, in, in as this in the same way that that, that I, I share before. Uh, but for example, one of the mm, big uh, ideas that we were sharing in the campaign was this this common desire that we have. We have a common desire, so it's a common desire where every single person can relate, no, and can make their own. So that that was like the the, the strong idea that that we work in the campaign and that we are uh, still uh, working in the from the institutional level, uh, and also working with some specific uh, hard uh, situations with another kind of uh, social uh, processes uh, etc but with the, yeah but trying really uh, to to make this uh, common desire really as a common as a common desire and and that each person can really relate with that and and make it their own Um, Yannick from Denmark, Copenhagen. Um, I mean, we're just in the sort of early phases of even trying to organize something municipalist. But uh, one of the important, to answer your question, or uh, to the room, is that <coughs> so obviously there's a lot of racism in Denmark as well, and a lot of it targets mi migrants. And there's a hierarchy of migrants between those who are within the EU, between those who are Roma populations, and between those who are from the, in particular the African continent or undocumented. So there are different hierarchies and part of our approach up until now has been um, engaged, engaging with and organizing with um, mig migrants who are forced into the asylum system. So we are organizing, like the next meeting is in the self-organized place for, like, uh, for asylum seekers. Um, and uh, it also ensures that when we talk about the city, we also talk about the peripheries of the city because asylum centers are sort of internment camps hidden away. So there's a spatial aspect to this. Um, and they're really important in sort of determining how we talk about who lives in the city because I have actually not heard enough about this, I think, during these last couple of days. This there's a problem when people talk about citizenship, but there's a whole racist dimension that's really, really missing. And uh, racialized cities such as London as well is like a, um, is a, is a, is a really big challenge. But I, I think it's the only way forward, actually. And also to create solidarity between those who are evicted from homes, those who get their social benefits cut, and, and those within the asylum system. So, um, like as a participant from Madrid, um, Madrid is also a city that is very divided, like in Barcelona, between classes. Like south part of the city is, is a popular working class, north side of the city um, is uh, wealthier, and this being increased by politics, by policies made by uh, uh, 22 years of conservative government. So showing that, showing that uh, the reason that this is a, this division is a political reason and it's not just a social or it's not that, that we like to live with the people that is like us. It's like that we are not into ghettos because uh, natural DNA, I don't know, something. It's because the policies in the city have may been done like that. That was, that was an important thing. So doing this map of inequality on how the money of the municipality was being uh, um, put in the neighborhoods, in some neighborhoods more than others, uh, in a specific policies like uh, cleaning, 
policies. For example, in Madrid, it's very clear. Uh, the, the clean system is privatized in Madrid, so it's, it's a, a, like private enterprises that do it, and they have a contract where it's clear that the north sides of the city have to be being, being clean more times a week than the southern parts of the city. So it's more important to have clean, you know, the, the wealthiest parts. So. Uh, showing that during the campaign was important, and uh, what is the solution? Well, the alternative that we said, okay, uh, against this we are going to decentralize. Uh, this means uh, we're going to take uh, these policies that is that are, that are creating inequality, and we're going to take them back to the neighborhoods. So go back to the neighborhoods and putting these problems in the center of the assemblies was very important for people to understand that we were actually caring about what's going on in the neighborhoods. So if the cleaning problem in, in the south side of the city was important, let's talk about that and let's talk also about what happened with infrastructures in the south side of the city where there is way less than that than in other sites. So putting these issues of, of policies, local policies in the center of the assembly was was important I think for the people in this in these neighborhoods and actually south sides of the city that usually traditionally voted in the 70s communist but after turned to the right for 20 years for the first time turned to the left again during this election and now the, the map of madrid is is our madrid voted for us on the south the whole south uh, and downtown and the city and the city center very affected by gentrification touristification and uh we lost <laughs> in the north side of the city which is normal i mean like uh, because we are uh, we are doing the centralization policies, so so it's important. I think for us, I don't know if for Coruña was the same, but for us was was a, uh, an important thing to do. And uh, we were thinking. I, I've seen um, some guys from other candidacies uh, around, so maybe I don't know if uh, they will also have a small presentation. Hello, uh, around uh, Zagreb. Uh, I don't know if other cities have already run or. Hi, thank you. Um, so my name's Trina Turner, and I'm from um, Stockton, California. Where I'm from in California um, is the Central Valley, and so it's a little bit different than the Bay Area. That's a lot more progressive. The Central Valley, um, a lot of migrant farm workers, et cetera, and a lot of class issues as well. And I wanted to kind of address um, your question and a few of the others, and even from one of the speakers that was talking earlier. Um, one of the issues is, is that you have people, classes, et cetera, that they're just not um, accustomed to dealing with someone different than they are. So even after the research, even after you point out all of the disparities, all of the systemic racism that exists, it still is what it is and that people aren't comfortable, they don't know how to interact. And so one of the speakers, when you were talking earlier, I came in, you were talking about um, having um, the uh, people do spoken word and poetry and different things like that, right? So that's good and it's bad. And so it's good in that um, it will expose a different class or culture of people to someone that's not used to it. It'll, for example, it'll expose someone that's black to someone that's white that's never had to deal, right? And, and they like to applaud that because they want to be entertained and it's curious and it allows me to see and, oh, that was quite clever, the poem that you did, right? And the political nature of what you just spoke about. Um, so the good part is they're now in the same room and there's exposure to someone different with something that's intriguing that what you're talking about. The bad part is that if uh, months later they're still in that same position, so as you're inviting them to come to the table to participate early on in all of the decision making, the encouragement is to ensure that you don't keep them in that spot of entertainment as opposed to decision making and what have you, because then we're just perpetuating further racism in that uh, process. Um, so it's, uh, it doesn't always feel good, but you do have to find an in, a way to get people in the same room that ordinarily would not have been invited into that space. Um, because racism is alive and well in California, you know, and the central Valley. So um, uh, not too long ago when I first came from the Bay Area into the Modesto area, and, and by the way, I sit in a place, I happen to be the executive director over a group of organizers in five counties in the Central Valley. And so I have organizers um, that are a lot of different uh, races, um, and then I'm the black woman that's over all of it, right? So even when I go into spaces, they still want to determine, so who are you? So are you one of the organizers, you know? And, and so it's, it's a constant um, reminder 
reminder and issue that we're still dealing with it and um, like it or not, you have to be creative about how you put classes of people together just to have them get used to the fact that there are people that have a thought, an idea, and matter of fact, intelligence that can also hold conversation um, and have you feel comfortable in the space you're in while they then become comfortable as well. Uh, thanks. Just because you invited others who ran the campaigns, so so I thought that maybe you don't, you don't know about this one. I'm from Budapest, Hungary, and we ran a we ran a campaign in from this year, from February to April. Uh, it was an interim election in the eighth district, which is the poorest district in Budapest, and the, within that, the poorest part of the poorest district had an interim election. And we only had three months uh, to do it, so it was obviously not enough to get elected. It was uh, the candidate was a female Lutheran priest with two small children, um, who is a member of a local discussion group, basically of citizens who are concerned about their about the issues of their of their district, uh, which is very rare in Hungary. We don't have these. these sort of People are not involved in local politics or in neighborhood politics, so it's a very unique organization and. Um, we actually did uh, both door to door, so we had 3,000 housing units and we went to all 3,000 housing units twice in three months. Um, and we also did the public space uh, outreach. And um, in the end, and it was a very kind of leftist, participatory, very different, um, we lost. We got 20% uh, of the vote, which for us was a big achievement from zero. Um, and the, the biggest challenge was that the, the so-called Socialist Party uh, ran a candidate who is a rapper, uh, a celebrity who was born in that district. Um, he may be a gangster, we don't know. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, it, it was a little difficult to, to, to run against him and we tried to convince him to support our candidate but it was really important for the Socialist Party to run to run a, a different kind of candidate also because they, they usually don't use celebrities in their politics and uh, unfortunately the votes that went for the Socialist Party and us were actually more than the winning candidate but of course you can never assume that people will vote if, if, you know, if there had been only one candidate you don't know if they had voted for for that, and the important part for us was that uh, out of this 20% that we got of the vote, most people seemed to be people who never voted before. So it seemed that we managed to get the people who were not interested in politics before to actually vote. A very sad statistic is that uh, the participation, the voter participation was 17%. So it, it hardly reaches any kind of democratic <laughs> threshold. And of course, partly it's, it, it was because it was an interim election, so nobody really cared. Uh, uh, partly because it's a very, very poor district that has been abandoned by, by the city, so people think that there is no point in changing anything or, or voting for anyone. And I think the important part is the what next part, because you were also, also mentioning that. So, so now what's happening is that this small discussion circle that originally uh, ran the candidate now, actually right now, at this moment, they convened um, people um, from the neighborhood and they identified six different topics that came out of out of the campaign that seems to be important for people uh, in the neighborhood and now they are going to start organizing small circles around, around these topics so uh, hopefully when we have the elections in 2019 in two years the the district the, the neighborhood will be much more organized along these uh, local local groups so that mobilization can work much better and I think that this is this is our only hope that we will kind of organize for two years and then I think then we have a chance um, for a victory. Okay. Uh, my name is Pierre Khoury. I am uh, a member of General Assembly of Beirut Madinati. Uh, Beirut Madinati in Beirut, Lebanon. We ran up, uh, we ran the, the municipality election and we took 40% uh, of the voters. Uh, we, we failed. Ah, okay. Uh, we took 40% of the voters, but we failed because our system law is about uh, majority, not proportional. Uh, what, what I have, what the problem in my country that there is 18 communities. Every community has 
uh, their own parties. So there was, wh when they uh, run up the run the election, uh, th they run the, they run the election without any program. Uh, they uh, try they trying to to build their population on the scary scary others community. So uh, what uh, Beirut Medina did done has they have a program a full program about housing, about public spaces and others. Uh, so uh, all uh, the parties gathered and uh, trying to beat us, but uh, we, we succeed because we took 40% of the vote. And now we are uh, continuing, uh, continuing by, by creating a groups of uh, people where they uh, trying to, to make some uh, neighborhood plan, some uh, municipality shadow. And uh, we are planning to run the election uh, in five years. Uh, that's all. Yes. Um, thank you. I'm Jelle de Graaf from the Pirate Party in Amsterdam. And a couple of, we have uh, local elections next year in March. A couple of months ago, we were asked by some other um, social movements, small political parties to join talks about uh, starting a civic uh, political movement together and yeah, working as a, uh, an electoral group in the, or participating as an electoral group instead of as a, all the small parties together. Um, and one of the questions I'm thinking about for the last couple of days is in Amsterdam, just as in um, London and, and other cities, you have this geographical segregation on all kind of levels. And there are actually policies that, that um, strengthen this segregation. And in Amsterdam, it's reached the point that all poor people are slowly moving out of the city center. Um, yeah, outside of uh, you have the, the roundway out of outside the roundway, um, and and the the consequence is that there are a lot of narrow interest group um, parties rising up, and there's not really one party that breaks through that and gets to or or yeah combines all the different groups. And I think uh, Claire, you in London. Um, face the same issue. I think people who are starting a municipalist uh, platform in other cities face the same problem as well. How do you combine all the different groups in a city that has a clear policy to <laughs> segregate them actually because yeah, the, the poorer uh, parts are getting poorer and the richer parts are getting richer for example. So maybe someone uh, has an answer to that because I really don't know. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, I'm from Burlington, Vermont, and um, we ran a candidate. And in Bur Burlington is divided into what they call eight wards or eight districts. And we ran a candidate in district two and three. Uh, we almost, we, we, she, uh, Janice Grill, and uh, she got, f actually got 47% of the vote. So w we came just about very close to winning. But, but what I consider the important thing that we're doing right now is that we are trying to have assemblies and uh, we, we have an institution that we're forming more and more, even though it's, it's old, um, which is called Neighborhood Planning Assemblies. And, and what we're doing now in this Ward 2 and 3 is that we actually have an assembly once a month that everyone that we invite everyone in the area to come to, and it actually starts with a community dinner. So we have a really large, in a public space, we have a really large community dinner that happens once a month in the assembly. And then we encourage, within the assembly, we encourage the people to discuss issues as though they themselves were the legislators. So we are really pushing as much as possible 
uh, participatory democracy. And when our candidate ran, she insisted that any policy that she would support within the city council would be a policy that the assembly voted on first, so that in a certain sense, she was just a sort of messenger for the assembly. So we've got a long way to really go, but that's what we're pushing for in Burlington. Uh, good morning, my name is um, Koen. I am from uh, the Workers' Party of Belgium. Um, I wanted to, to uh, respond on the issue of uh, class and politics. Um, so I think in Belgium and in, in most countries um, here represented, uh, the majority of the people who are in politics, um, they belong to a certain political establishment and also a certain class. Um, so this is a big issue in Belgium. And um, so from the Workers' Party of Belgium, we had in 2012, we had our first um, breakthrough on a, a municipal level uh, in uh, 15 uh, cities, bigger and smaller around the country. Then in 2014, we had our first people who were elected in um, uh, the federal and regional parliaments in Belgium. Now, um, of our, the people who were elected, uh, several of them have a working class background. So we have a steel worker, we have a, a guy who is a metro driver, um, we have a guy who repairs um, uh, heating uh, in homes. And um, we've discovered that um, actually there are a lot of problems um, when, when those people, they enter in, a, in, a, in the political system as it exists today. So um, we have problems with the language which is being used in the political system. It's not the language of working people, it's a different language. Uh, the clothes are different, the procedures are different. Um, it's also very technical, very complicated. Most people ha have university degrees, they are lawyers. Um, so there are a lot of barriers for those people to actively participate in uh, the political process on this level. And I would give you, like to give you a very small anecdote, which is uh, from the guy who repairs um, uh, heating. Um, he has uh, what we call a budget meter, and it's when your electricity uh, risk is in the risk of being cut. Um, in Belgium, you get a card and you have to recharge your electricity meter and um, then you only get electricity. So otherwise, you, your electricity, because he couldn't pay his, 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 uh, his electricity bill. And so he, he um, asked a question to the Minister of Energy about this issue. And so he was ridiculed by the whole parliament and they said, well, uh, the minister, he responded in, well, uh, I have a contact of a good social worker, uh, he can resolve your issue. Yeah? So, um, but he, he was talking about the issue which touches hundreds of thousands of people around Belgium every day uh, because the price of the energy of the budget meter is much higher than, than the regular uh, price. Huh? Um, so we are trying to come up with some solutions to this problem, which is a difficult problem. So for one, we would like to drastically reduce wages of people in politics. So we could also attract a different kind of, um, of, uh, of, of people. We would also like to have a system where um, people who enter in parliaments, they continue to work because now the people, for example, the steel worker and the, and the metro driver, he was surrounded by his colleagues when he was campaigning and now he's isol isolated in parliament. So we try to have a system where they continue to work uh, part time and they also go to parliament, but they stay in contact with their colleagues. They also, they, they, they get input, they get remarks, they know what happens on the, on the floor. Uh, so it will really help, and they should also just remain, um, uh, when they enter uh, Parliament, they should uh, continue to have the same wage that they had before, uh, so they don't become some kind of an establishment or a separate class. And I think also the democratic system, which is put in place in many countries, on a municipal level, but also on a federal level, uh, it's something which really should be put into question, because um, it's very difficult for people with uh, a different class background to enter there and to participate in a, in a full manner in this, uh, in this process. Great, so I think this last intervention is already giving us a chance to start talking about how we are now the ones we, we, we have already, we have uh, two other cities, that, uh, one, three other cities that want to talk, but we can already start talking about, so what happens after the election? Even we, the ones that won, the ones that didn't won, but all of you are here, we're planning on running again. 
So we're already organizing our meetings and we are uh, like strengthening our organizations. How we, are we doing that? And I think in relation with participation, in relation also with, uh, with sustainability and with resources, it's important also. Personnel, uh, can the, the people that are in the city hall be part-time jobs or is that a full-time job? What happened with uh, economic resources? All these things we can already start commenting maybe. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Tomislav, I come from uh, Zagreb and uh, I was involved, uh, so there are five, five of us from this political platform called Zagreb and Nash, as you can see on my t-shirt, which means Zagreb is ours. But here in the room there's only two of us, Theo and me, but five of us are here in the conference. So basically uh, we have an activist background and uh, seven years ago there was a huge mobilization in the city of Zagreb uh, within the right to the city movement. and. Uh, just uh, now we decided to run for the city parliament in Zagreb. Uh, the objective was to establish a political platform similar to Barcelona and Comú and Aora Madrid and try to pass the threshold, which is 5%, in order to enter the city parliament. And uh, we, we managed to do this process in only five months and we had a campaign of less than three months. Uh, so we started from zero, without any kind of mobilization. Before that, no social movement uh, protests, so starting from scratch. And we managed to get, uh, so we had uh, candidates for the mayor, we had uh, candidates in order to increase the visibility of the list for the city parliament, we had the candidacy for the city parliament, we had candidates for the city districts and city neighborhoods. So there are four levels of governance in the city of Zagreb. So we managed to get 8% of the votes uh, for the city parliament, and which means four seats in the city parliament, 21 seats in city district councils, and uh, 47 seats in neighborhood councils. So uh, we, we had local chapters in every city district, almost every city district, but only now, I mean, when we entered the city parliament, uh, now we try to really establish the whole local organization from every neighborhood up to the city council. So to have all these four levels of the government somehow connected. We also have, uh, uh, some of us have a rotation system, so the city council members will rotate. Uh, so not all of them will stay the same for the whole mandate, uh, which we also tried. We basically see this as a, some kind of opportunity to basically see how the system is functioning and then prepare for the next elections. So we'll stay in the opposition for some, for some time. So, yeah, uh, what is the question? <laughs> uh, my name is Dovic Veselinovic and I came from Belgrade um, uh, from an initiative which is called Let's Not Drown Belgrade, which is game of the world. Basically, we are uh, struggling against the waterfront project, but um, after the three and a half or four years of the struggling against the, that mega urban development project, uh, we are thinking what to do next because we try every uh, possible or every uh, uh, available um, instrument uh, to uh, influence the politics and to word of the city ordinary citizens uh, be represented. We started with uh, complaints. We did do like massive civil protest campaigns, what what uh, ever not. But that uh, all of that hasn't uh, resulted in uh, anything basically. So we are now thinking thinking to uh, form a, a list for the next local election, will, which will be uh, in normal circumstances in April 2018, but uh, probably earlier because in Serbia we have early elections every one and a half year because the people in power can do that. Uh, so for us it's very interesting to see different experiences and, and, and to learn from your, um, your uh, struggles. Uh, but I would like to raise uh, one question maybe is how which we are, we are now thinking about how to preserve the basis from which you are coming from social movements the ecosystem of organization in sense in two sense in, in in sense of human resources if you now are coming into kind of politics how that division can function and also in the sense of, of finance resources in in the in the situations or in the econo economical 
uh, uh, systems uh, which we are coming from, it's very hard then to have people who have basic basic salaries to do a uh, uh, campaign or, 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 or to be involved more in politics. So that's, that is two kind of questions which is uh, very hard for us to answer. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marta. I'm from Warsaw, Poland, and uh, we have a similar name of our association as our friends from Zagreb. So a city as ours. Uh, that's a funny thing to meet here. Uh, and have a, and I have a, uh, I have a Warsaw, po Warsaw, Poland, Warsaw. So I have a quite similar questions uh, about money. How to found, uh, how to fund because. The next year, uh, the local uh, elections are coming in Warsaw. We already uh, started, uh, we already went through the, the last one. But uh, it was in a, in a spark of a moment after three months of uh, uh, really, um, uh, uh, you know, newly based association. We were new on the, on the uh, local parties market and political market. Now we are uh, association after uh, four years of, of uh, struggling with the political market uh, in Warsaw. Uh, so we, uh, we would like to ask you, like all of, all of you, how you fund, how you crowdfund your, uh, your running to, to local uh, government. Because for us, um, just uh, making, uh, posting uh, information on our uh, page or making a mailing list or going through uh, our friends, it's not enough. We need uh, uh, to, to your know-how. I need your know-how to how you do it because uh, that's the problem with participation with people. Uh, because uh, in Poland, if you are a political party, you don't have a problem with funding. You are funded from uh, from the uh, by the government uh, money, uh, by the citizens' money. But we are an association. We don't want to change that for now. So uh, how do you manage to to make people to participate? and uh, in a practical sense, really. Thanks. Well, I, I'm not going to ask about the money yet, but she can, she can answer the, the question. Um, just a few ideas about uh, what about what happened the day after the elections. We won, but... It, 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 it's important, but uh, what happened? Uh, we we built an structure uh, to go to run to the elections, but nowadays it isn't work, or at least at least it isn't the the structure that we really want. Uh, and about effective and sustainable uh, relations, uh, I don't want to lie. Uh, I think that. Uh, we think or uh, we really don't have a sustainable uh, structure and <laughs> and if we are effective it's because sometimes uh, because it is not uh, sustainable and that's a, a really big problem but uh, when we work or when just some ideas uh, because um, um, the there are, I, I imagine that uh, everywhere is, is the same, but there are a few overload groups out of the institution, I, I mean at the, at the movement, and some other groups that uh, really don't know uh, what or what to do or how to manage their time. And uh, there is an idea, and maybe it is, it is only works uh, with us, but when we really work in projects, in common projects, uh, when we are uh, activist as we were, uh, and we, when we really like what we are doing, uh, it usually works. And it is not uh, always uh, obvious in politics when you like what you are doing, and this is a, an important part of an, an important part of our candidacies. I think when they really uh, believe and like what what, what they were doing, it. it it, 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 it happens, it works, and it is important to not forget the idea of being creative and uh, do what we, what we really like and what we really used to, used to do, and maybe she, she can answer about the, the money. <laughs>
I can answer, but I will not give a solution. <laughs> um, I mean, the participation in, in Maria Atlantica, uh, you don't have to, to, to pay like a, a share, a quota, uh, monthly. A fee, exactly. You don't have to, to pay a fee. I mean, you just, if you want to participate, you just came and, and participate. And, and actually, I mean, the campaign, we, we, we paid uh, making microcredits uh, that any, any people could, could make, and, and we also made it. And then uh, from the Spanish system, then we received some part of the money, depending on, on the... Yeah. Yeah, of course, and, and I mean it's a hard it's a hard problem, and and uh, we have to use all the platforms that are already working, the crowdfunding, and and that kind of things. But but uh, I don't think we we have to connect directly the participation with the with the fee or the founding. I mean, of course, it's important, but it's not the only important thing. And and I think also building some kind of alliances with other structures that maybe have mm, uh, no problems of 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 founding, for example, there are some private foundations and they're actually part uh, come together no? with, uh, with them, I, I, I think. Um, and about the, um, yeah, about uh, what we, we, we are, now, now we are, uh, it's the really the, the middle moment on our process because we, we won in 2015 and now it's two years left for the next elections. And, and we are starting to, to make an analyze and a diagnosis, uh, especially from the inside uh, part, because we really need to, to have a strong organization to affront the, the new campaign that will come over, no? and, and to uh, see if, if we really have a strong confluency uh, still, and how we really make it function as a sustainable uh, organization that actually today is not. I mean, we mo the, the more active part of the of the movement came into the institution, and the institutional rhythm eats you. So uh, even if you are participating in the movement, uh, you are uh, working on the institutional level really, really hard. And then we make some contradictional decisions. For example, uh, c uh, taking down our salaries to uh, to make low the the costs of the of the people working in the council, but that means that then we don't have uh, the enough people to work with us inside the council, and then uh, that different part of the, of the money that we could maybe, we, can, we will not take it from, uh, because of our ethic code, but maybe we can use it to found projects, no? and to, ma to empower uh, local and collectives around the movement, and we are not doing that. Other experience in Spain are doing that. So I mean, <laughs> we are an example of uh, maybe a, a yeah how we really built a, a really I mean honest and and really co ethic code and and really a strong one, <laughs> but how that it's also uh, making us uh, the things more difficult at the same time, no? and also how to we build uh, structures and, and, and rules, as I said before, without knowing how the institution function from the inside. So yeah, that's more or less one. Well, we began as a group of citizens with no money and no, no, no funding, so we, um, and the campaign we, f we fund the campaign with uh, donations, uh, the people more involved, and also we we had some collaboration of people, for instance, to prepare the the sound system for to be in on on a square or something like that. So we have uh, donations of money and also donations of work and and materials. 
and also we I think one ingredient should be uh, creativity because we made a campaign which costed uh, maybe 3,000 euros and we don't make uh, big uh, expenses but uh, original <laughs> actions which are very uh, which are not expensive so we, we managed to do with that we, we don't print too much papers and, and these kind of things and so cr creativity collaboration of uh, creativity to, to do cheap things <laughs> Uh, collaboration of people with money, donations, and also collaboration with material or, or work of uh, a group of people <laughs> helping. After that, uh, we uh, now we have uh, also voluntary fees to to fund. We have the donations of the people elected, which uh, we also have a code of ethics, and they donate part of the salary to the organization, which is uh, very few, but it's something and we are not now thinking about uh, some crowdfunding digital campaign but we haven't done uh, yet and it's uh, it's uh, not enough to be <laughs> to be honest but uh, it, it was enough to be there but uh, we need to to raise more money and also the the other big pro problem one sh could be money and the other one is uh, someone talks about that is uh, how to to combine uh, participation of people with uh, studies which can uh, help for instance in in legal legal issue issues or political uh, what things where you need some more knowledge <laughs> and what uh, the people that uh, participated at the first stage, but uh, maybe they, they cannot do institutional work. What, how to participate now, and what to do? So w one of the things uh, we are doing is uh, also, uh, for instance, now in July we are going to do a summer school to share some of this knowledge and try to to share it with people less uh, with less. Uh, knowledge about laws and all these kind of things. Uh, we've done also some workshops in neighborhoods, especially in, in very popular neighborhoods, for instance, uh, explaining how uh, to uh, to ask for this um, energy aid or how it's the, the law on housing or the law on uh, especially things that affects very direct to these people. And we, we've had a very good experience in a very popular neighborhood in Lleida with um, a lot of migration, a lot of gypsy people, and it's a poor neighborhood. And we've been there many times and uh, explaining how is the law, how people can ask for some public aid and this kind of things, M making like sharing the knowledge about that. And, and they have created a, like an uh, independent movement there in the neighborhood, not linked with, that, with us. They are working in, on their own and they are empowering the, themselves and now they are going to other neighborhoods to share their process. So first we went there, we teach or explain how the law was, they, they get the information, they accompany each other to go to the city hall to ask for aids and to, to negotiate, for instance, uh, house uh, for a house, a public uh, house or something like that. And I know that I accompany you, then we both accompany he him, then we three accompany the, the next one, so l like a chain of mutual help, and then we go to another neighborhood and we share this experience with other people, and it, it has been very interesting, and it's, it's something we, we have helped to, to grow, but uh, it's an autonomous movement that uh, it's, well, I think it's very interesting. <coughs> so it's 12. Um, the workshop should finish now, but I don't know if you guys want to keep going until we have until 12.30 12 that the plenary starts. You want to talk? Oh, I have like six people that want to talk. Do you guys want to keep going to listen to what these six people have to tell us? 
you want to talk to? Seven people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we are seven now. Okay. So let's try to be very uh, short. Uh, just to, to answer some of the questions very quickly from Madrid. Uh, the campaign of Madrid, we made it with 200,000 euros, which sounds like a lot of money, but it's not that much. Actually, uh, the main cases of corruption that now we're dealing in, in Spain is because the Popular Party uh, financed uh, campaigns in Madrid with public money to go uh, below a million euros in, in local campaigns. So. Uh, is very very few money. Uh, we all uh, we got it with m microfinance, and we've already given back that money to the people that that uh, loaned us. But I think that there is 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 no, there is no way to to know how much money people put into time into voluntary work. These campaigns are based on voluntary work. I think there is no money that can pay uh, that that uh, this kind of uh, uh, based organi grassroots organization. So I think that. Somehow, it's important to forget a little bit about this kind of resources and to focus on the, uh, on those uh, uh, voluntary organization that is going to make it uh, work. And after, you, you will need money for materials and stuff, but what you really need is the people uh, willing to do those mailing lists, uh, videos, the com organization, uh, all of our com uh, communication people, uh, staff, were voluntaries, and and uh, and I think that's the main the main thing. For the afterward, I think for us at least, and I think it's also important that we won, which is something that we were not expecting. Uh, but uh, the human resources is being a huge problem. Uh, most of the activists that were working in the organization are now in the institution, and now they have workloads of like, I don't know, 60 hours a week working in the institution. So. This is creating a huge uh, imbalance between the organization and the institution. And it's a huge problem that we're dealing with, but we have no solutions. So um, it is uh, it's a huge problem. The, the movement is empty, and the most and the core people, let's say, the, 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 import, the people that were during the whole process that ver knows very well the organization, as, as Claudia said, there was the methodology, but also the group of people that were encouraging and like putting all this hope on, on this process. Now they are in the institution, so uh, we're somehow empty also in this kind of uh, richness of, of uh, human resources. Um, the other problem that we have and we are not knowing how to deal with is that our campaigns, and I think we, we win with the hope uh, of the people of change and dealing with frustration afterwards is huge. This, this is one of the main problems afterwards, inside the organization too. I mean like for our organization, is the change that we wanted to do uh, is not as big as, uh, as, uh, as what we can do. Having the power, being in the power doesn't mean having the power, and this is a huge uh, important thing to learn. Uh, so dealing with frustration within the organization is important. So being able to explain why we're not being able to do the changes that we promised or that we plan to do uh, within the organization and that people in the organization are feel able and empowered to go to the neighborhoods to explain the good things, but also the bad things. And this is the hard part, going and explain why not why we are not doing this housing policy that we wanted to do, why we are not doing this uh, social policy that we wanted. This is a really big uh, challenge. Um, yeah. Okay, my, my name is Mikel. I come from Errenteria in Basque Country. I'm local councillor there. Uh, well, I, I don't, I don't, I am not going to say again the same things. She said about the money, she said, she too, uh, said. You have something specific, you know, uh, we, make, we make a list of, a list of, of needs. Okay, uh, um, website, history, not in money. Uh, so, uh, I, and and with, with other things, the only thing we, we need with, with money was infographies. Mm -hmm. yeah. We pay it by, by your own pocket. Yeah. It's, it's the, so the, the reality needs are time and creativity and activism. Nosotros cuatro mil. Claro. 
Um, my name is Marlin. I live in Gothenburg in Sweden. And uh, I think I have a question, but I don't think we have time to answer it now. But I can raise the question and you can come afterwards. And maybe we were organizing an aside event as well, and we can continue the discussion there. So I'm curious to know more, know more about like uh, what you were saying. What's next after you're standing for elections and you don't win kind of thing? and Or you are pushing for candidates to do what you want and building up the movement and pushing so like how to continue working on that and strategies for that. Um, we were a part of uh, different organizations. One of them is called The City We Want in Gothenburg, but in Swedish, Staden We Will Ha, and Democratic Transition, and as well uh, a network in Sweden, uh, working along the lines for democratization. And uh, in Gothenburg, we started off in 2012, like let's try to pull something off and do a citizen, citizen summit in a process. So before the elections 2014, we were doing uh, neighborhood meetings and a citizen summit. So we're like, we don't know how to do this, but let's just try to do it. And uh, to, we were inspired from in Montreal in Canada, how they were doing these citizen summits and uh, citizen agendas and bringing lots of movements together and pushing for the agenda and pushing for uh, changes and so we did that uh, it was great experience of getting people together and people to uh, talk solutions and we got the agenda and our plan was to not to stand for elections but for before the elections to present the this agenda on uh, seven dif we have got se dif seven different subjects like housing, democracy, environmental, etc. And uh, the proposals, and we had uh, prioritized nine uh, proposals, and for them to, what's the, this political party is organized, yes or no, and how can we push for these changes, and to call them accountable. Uh, but it's difficult to get the politicians uh, and parties to say yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> so it's difficult to follow up and the thing is like how to after that we're like we didn't have the like to make the changes we need like more uh, movement behind us to make the changes come through because to have the uh, the changes we want to see this needs a lot of force to push for the changes to come so we are now revising and building more movement with different associations and working more on housing issues and getting together and but yeah like how it from like take by the city like how when you're standing and you're you're a great campaign but not ar arriving to getting enough votes to get somewhere and like how to because it feels like people want to f see change in order to mobilize more people and how do you work on that do you see my yeah So hello everybody, my name is David. I live in the city of Leuven in Belgium. Uh, it's a city of 100,000 people. And uh, I want to do a very modest contribution to the debate. Uh, in 2012, I was elected as an activist candidate on the list of the Green Party. And so since then, I'm active in the city council. But I am a oppositional councillor, so we don't have to govern the city. I mean, uh, it's a pity maybe, but I wanted to uh, tell something about what to do after being elected. And for me, the conclusion after five years is the thing to avoid is to lose yourself completely in the institutional thing or in the details of the texts and in the internal discussions between the politicians, etc. Much more important is to not to represent active people in the city, but to be part of the movements in the city and to offer your seat in the council to these movements. And so in my city, it means that uh, lots of people are active against a new car parking project in the center of the city. Well, you can use your political position not to represent these people, but to be part of the struggle and to defend this on the political level. Uh, same thing, for example, there was a public space in our city that was um, 
uh, given to a liberal politician who wants to do a commercial project there. There was lots of protest. Well, being part of that protest is more important than the internal agenda of the city council. Or, to give a third example, uh, there were lots of people um, concerned about TTIP. Well, then we could do a proposal to make uh, Leuven a TTIP-free um, city. All these kind of things. So what happens in the city is more important than what happens in the council. And the last thing I want to say is uh, we shouldn't always or we should stop with always asking things to the people who are forming the government and leading us if you can also do things for example in our city there is uh, some areas are quite polluted people are asking for black carbon um measures measuring how do you say that meetings uh, the carbon me uh, right. yeah. no yeah you know that yeah. the emissions of cars yeah. Um, well, you can organize these things yourself and show where is the problem, what is the problem, instead of only asking that other people should do it in our place. So that were some conclusions after five years being in a, a city council. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Regarding resources, um, uh, in Zagreb, we had experience of um, uh, building first two months of building a platform of something less than 500 people um, who were then the crucial resource for getting, signature, getting signatures to, be, uh, to get the candidacy, um, collecting the money. And this experience is somehow, um, I would say, um, important for, for let's say, ad hoc or this type of uh, 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 very short campaigns and gathering uh, before the immediate elections. And our experience is that, um, that we managed to have more than 30,000 30, euros uh, collected basically from the uh, people from the platform. So it functioned Although we didn't present it this uh, that way, it functions some, somehow as a, a kind of crowdfunding, um, but without too much structure or because uh, in Croatia you can't uh, get the money if the people are not signed and uh, identified by the, you know, the, 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 num the number of ID and stuff like that. So. Um, the whole thing somehow, f at the end, we, uh, as a political organization, we borrowed the money from ourselves as a, as a citizens. When we, when we realized that we are, you know, uh, at the kind of edge of a threshold, uh, so we said, okay, we shouldn't miss the elections for 500 votes. So we collected money uh, and. Um, a part of giving the money, we also borrowed the money to the organization. So it was kind of um, those 450 people were totally engaged in uh, uh, programming of the platform, in collecting signatures and uh, uh, gathering, uh, getting the money. And it was like something around 500, uh, two, uh, 200 people gave the money, some, and they decided uh, which money, and um, it was it functioned somehow as a pledge, you know, like, okay, ten of us at the beginning, let let we contribute, and when you have this collective endeavor, then people are easy to 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 give even their savings if they believe in this. So in that sense, uh, self financing uh, is somehow crucial if you starting from scratches. So my partner uh, told me like. <laughs> Uh, in a bit cynical way, he t uh, she told me, like, um, everybody goes to politics to get the money, you know, only you are putting your money <laughs> into, the, into politics. So it was kind of, because we, uh, this platform, this, uh, let's say, inner circle of 450 people uh, was somehow a trust network, uh, mm, mm, 
uh, people had trust in this uh, in this uh, project, and then they were eager to uh, to uh, to participate in uh, in. And now we will get all the money back because we entered in them, um, uh, and there is a refunding logic in in entering into the into the governance uh, structures. So. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Lamin I'm from the Gambia. Yes, um, again, I'm, a, I'm an aspiring candidate for the next mayoral election in my municipality. Um, I, I had uh, one issue being highlighted, which I think is a best practice, and it has helped us um, work out very well in the Gambia, and that's um, formation of a coalition. And I think um, everybody has to you know, embrace that it can work out very well. It worked for us. We were able to topple um, a dictatorship of 22 years. A coalition helped us to, to work out that. One thing that I have not had been said is the involvement of youth, young people. I think young people have the power, they have the zeal, they have the energy, you know, that when they are mobilized, they can really help you know, uh, move mountains. Thank you.